my name is Robert Ivey. I'm the Chief Technical Officer at GCA Technology Services. We're gonna talk about authentication. The first step of authentication, which everybody's heard of, and some buzzwords such as MFA come to mind. MFA is short for multi-factor authentication, but most people don't know what are the factors. There's actually only three types of factors that exist. The first one is something you know. That's something like your mother's maiden name, the place where you were born, your dog's name, your password, your PIN code, your social security number, things of that nature. The second type of factor is something you are. This is your retina, your th biometric thumbprint, your face ID for Apple, all those different factors. And the third factor is something you have. This can be a token, it could be your cell phone, it could be a smart card or anything you're carrying. When we talk about multi-factor authentication, what we are talking about is that you have more than one of these three factors. What this means is when you're in something you know, if you have something like a pen, a password, or a challenge response question, when you're at a site and they say they do multi-factor authentication and they ask you to log in with a password and then provide your mother's maiden name, they are not doing multi-factor authentication. They are doing one factor, something you know, they're just doing it twice. However, if you have somebody who does, okay, something, your password, and then they move on to something you have, such as your cell phone, and do an SMS token where they pass you that, or maybe a biometric like your thumbprint is used, that's multi-factor because now you are using something you know, your password in combination with something you have or something you are. That's true multi-factor authentication. So when you're out there and you're deciding how to do multi-factor authentication, the first thing to keep in mind is there's only three factors. Make sure you're using two different factors, not one factor twice. Now, we're gonna move on, we're gonna start talking about these factors. The first one that everybody hates is the old password. Now, here's how passwords work if your vendor is doing things correctly. You're sitting at your computer and you're gonna type out your password. And let's just say that we're using the most insecure password ever, password. What happens is the word password has an algorithm running on it. Now, algorithm, for people who don't know, Everybody's heard the word before, nobody knows what it means. Algorithm is just a way for a computer scientist to tell you that they did something and they don't want to explain how they did it. So an algorithm is some process that they run that just the computer scientists who invented it, they don't want to tell you how they did it. So the algorithm we're going to run is called a hash. That's if we're doing it correctly. It's going to take the word password and it's going to turn it into some sort of weird difference. Now the key is the word password, if you run the same hash algorithm, will always come out to the same value. This value is then sent over the internet, over to and stored in some sort of database over at the application. So they store this value and then the next time you log in, you type in the password, it becomes this and they check the value. Why is this insecure? Because people steal this all the time. Every time you read about a breach, they're stealing this. There's a few other reasons. The word password's only eight characters. Nowadays, computers, we can do every possible combination of letters, numbers, and special characters in order to get every single one of these hashed values and store them in what we call a rainbow table. When we're stored in a rainbow table, it means I can now look up your password no matter what it is. Also, passwords are used everywhere and they're reused everywhere. So there's databases out on the dark web that have your password, we know what it is, associated with your email address, all your usernames, and we try them. That's why we try to get away from passwords, they're bad. Another factor is something such as a biometric. Biometrics are a lot better. However, there's the creep factor. When I put my thumbprint on here and I store it up here in a database, I don't want my thumbprint or my face or my retina getting stolen. So the creep factor with biometrics is bad. Now there are ways to do biometrics without actually taking the biometric data and store them in the database and we'll get there. The third one is things such as things you have. These are some of the most common and oftentimes some of the best ones. 
So if we do something we have, such as my phone, via SMS, there's a problem with SMS. Most people have probably read about it, but there does exist a problem. The problem with SMS is this. In order for me to obtain your cell phone, what do I have to do? All I have to do is go down to the local kiosk at the mall for whoever your provider is, T-Mobile, Sprint, Verizon, AT&T, and trick that 19-year-old kid who's making minimum wage into thinking that I am you. If I can trick them into thinking that I am you, I now have your phone because they will give me a brand new phone, put a, put the little SIM card in it, and now I have your phone number. That's how easy it is to steal, which is why we don't want that. So what can we use? There's a variety of new factors coming out today that are much, much, much more robust. One of those factors is, that's becoming very common, is a push notification. The way that a push notification works is this. The app over here says, okay, hello Robert, I want to make sure it's you. They actually send a push to an app running on my phone. My phone says, is this you? Now, why is this better than SMS? Because this is specific to the device, not specific to the SIM card. So if you steal my phone, you can answer that challenge. However, you cannot go to the kiosk at, I use Verizon, you cannot go to the Verizon wireless kiosk in the mall and ask them, hey Robert, I or, hey I'm Robert, I lost my phone, can you give me a new phone? If you get a new phone, this does not work. This challenge that they push to the app is only the device that I've enrolled, which is in my pocket. So in order for them to get that device, they have to steal it out of my pocket. Then once they have that device, a lot of these push notification applications, one of the things they do is before you can hit the yes button down here, you have to unlock my phone. Well, in order to unlock my phone, I have a secondary challenge within the phone. The challenge is either a pin or a biometric. Now, up here we said biometrics have the creep factor. The creep factor exists when you take my biometric data and you store them off in your database, which is going to get compromised. So what we've done here is we've taken the biometric and we've only stored it on my device. So my phone has my biometric and that is used to unlock my phone, which can answer yes, or my pen, which is also not stored in your database, it's only stored on my phone, can be used to unlock my phone. Now, if I use any combination of these two in order to unlock this device, in order to hit yes and answer your challenge, what have we just done? My phone is something I have. There's my first factor. And then in order to unlock the phone to answer the challenge, I'm either using my pin, which is something I know, or I'm using my biometric, which is something I am which means a simple push notification to log into your application can be two-factor authentication because I'm gonna combine something I have with something I am or something I know in order to get in. Now notice, I did not prompt for a password whatsoever in this flow. That is a passwordless authentication flow, unless you wanna consider the pin some form of a password. The other reason why this is good is because in the event that you steal my SMS, if you get a SIM card put into another phone, you cannot you cannot answer this challenge. This is specific only to the phone that I installed the app on and enrolled. Then the biometric and the PIN number are also never transmitted out to the application's database, so they never have it. So in the event that this, whoever this application is, in the event they get hacked, they do not have my PIN and they do not have my thumbprint. Now what I've done is I've used two separate factors that are only stored on my phone in order to unlock the third factor, which is the phone itself true multi-factor authentication in a secure way.